Dear friends, dear students, welcome to Gal and IAS. I'm Justin. This is Art and Culture. Yes, prelims examination. In prelims examination, Art and Culture, of course, can be a game changer. Sometimes four questions, sometimes eight questions. Now, Art and Culture, broadly speaking, Art, Architecture, Literature. Art, Architecture, Literature. This is what you have to cover. But of course, it's current affair portions are also important then subdivisions are also important art and culture let me tell you understanding the prehistoric art forms is always good indus civilization art and architecture of indus civilization is always good because upsc continuously asks then there is art and architecture during time of mauryas post mauryas guptas post guptas early medieval India, then of Vijayanagar, of Cholas, of Bahmani, of Delhi Sultanate, of Mughals, then art and architecture of modern times. This is very, very, very important. You have to cover it very well. For example, prehistoric art, UPC asked in the mains examination, UPC can ask in the prelims also. Sometimes the cultural sites and their geographical identity, a favorite area of UPC, in the form of match the pair type question. Okay, for example, some popular cultural sites of India are given in one side, then their states or river banks, river basins or hilly ranges where it is situated, you know, that can be given on the opposite side, match the pair. This is a question, it's about that prehistoric art. Three statements are there. Prehistoric paintings only concentrated in North India, prehistoric an age before the written history. Prehistoric men, cave dwellers, they're done painting in the cave walls or on the cave walls. So prehistoric paintings concentrated in North India, only in North India. You see, when they give the word only, then it is little fishy. This is something very suspicious. See, these prehistoric settlements were not only in North India, it was in Central India, it was in South India, it was in Jammu and Kashmir. Okay, it was in different parts of India, prehistoric settlements and even these prehistoric paintings happened in Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Jammu and Kashmir, Uttarakhand. So this is not only in North India. That's why first statement is wrong. Themes of paintings of Vimbedega, that is of the common, ordinary people's ordinary daily life. Yes, of course. Their hunting scenes, dancing scenes, cooking scenes, their food gathering, okay. Their daily life events become the theme of this prehistoric painting, which is true only, which is true only. Locadier paintings, famous prehistoric paintings in Bihar. It's a prehistoric painting, but location is not in Bihar. It is in Locadier paintings, you know, that, that is in Uttarakhand. So understanding the popular cultural sites and their locations, you know, it's always it will give you an upper hand in the art and culture part of prelims, okay? So here out of this, I would say, let's go for these two only is the answer. Now, any aspirant who cover art and culture for prelims examination, they must touch in the civilization, Harappan civilization. Harappan civilization, its art and architecture is important for you. Coming to its art and architecture, yes, you have to study on Indus people and the town planning, their urbanization or their urban culture, their smart city abhyan, their special economic zones, okay. So what all these urban features or town planning of Indus people important for you? Their artistic sensation or artistic creativity, their terracotta figurines, their seals, their weights and meshes, their pottery, okay. All those aspects are or maybe their uh, like bronze casting, all those things are important for you. Okay, their metal casting, their bronze casting, their terracotta figurines and their stone carvings, all is important for you. So here, regarding this uh, Indus civilization, then UPC can ask a question. They already asked a question like a comparison with uh, its features and these uh, other river valley civilizations. That way, or Indus civilization, its urbanization and modern urbanization. It means they asked different questions. Prelims also, they asked a lot of questions regarding its terracotta art, regarding its uh, seals, regarding its uh, stone statues, regarding its uh, bronze casting, regarding its uh, urbanization or town planning. Now coming to Indus, Indus people and the uh, town planning, 
Please understand they followed grid pattern like a beautiful chessboard. The city is just like a chessboard, you know, rectangular blocks are there. Streets and roads are cutting at right angles, dividing city into many rectangular blocks. Grid pattern, they followed grid pattern. They followed a grid pattern, roads and streets are cutting at right angles, it's important. Then see, the city is divided into two. City's division is like this, there is citadel and there is lower town. Citadel is towards the western side, lower town is towards the eastern side. Citadel, try to understand, that is towards the western side, where the buildings of huge dimensional structures, huge dimensional buildings, huge buildings are located in the western side of the city, in the citadel part. Buildings, you know, located on a, a, an upraised mud platform, you know, that is, they are very conscious about this uh, flooding and natural calamities, etc. So, to protect from such natural calamities, they built the, such structures on an upraised mud platform. So, citadel is, that is, the rulers, the administrative classes, residents, business classes, residents, of course, the huge dimensional buildings like a uh, pillared hall, assembly hall, uh, temple-like palaces, no temples, temple-like palaces, or this, uh, what is called uh, granaries, great bath, all such great structures are uh, situated towards this uh, western side of the city, that is in the citadel part. Towards the eastern side, it is lower town. Yes, it's, it's a ruling classes or administrative classes, elite classes, they are also living in the western side in the citadel. And to the working people, they are towards the eastern side, okay. It's in the lower town. They're, they're, it's, it's a beautiful concept of a welfare state also. Even the working classes, you know, they were given sufficient space to uh, space for dwelling. Their dwelling places are towards the eastern side. And the city is fortified, okay. Now, I would say when you study art and culture, it's a current affairs when art and uh, culture is in the news, UPC can ask questions from their very static portions. For example, yes, as part of India's G20 presidency, as part of India's G20 presidency, the government is planning to host to five key meetings focusing on the cultural influence at Kajrao, Bhuvaneshwar, Hambi and Agra. Now, the cultural characteristics or cultural features of Kajrao, Bhuvaneshwar, Hambi, Agra can be asked or any of them can be asked. That is the way from the very static of static part of such current affairs, UPC can ask questions. Or there is a question like, for example, several prehistoric settlements or artifacts or archaeological remains found on the banks of three rivers flowing in these years, uh, Attapadi hills in Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Now the question is, recently this thing is identified and named the, that uh, three rivers flowing in these uh, states. That way they can ask the question. Okay. Bali Yatra, one of the biggest trade fairs in Odisha was held uh, recently, uh, you, you know, for eight days. So the question can be like this, uh, Bali Yatra. So the, the linkage, linkage between that ancient Kalinga, Odisha, ancient Kalinga state and uh, Indonesia or ancient Kalinga state and Southeast Asia. Or maybe the spread of this, uh, or uh, the spread of the culture, uh, the material culture from Kalinga to Southeast Asia or Southeast Asia to Kalinga. UPC can ask a question. So, from the very static portions of such current affairs, UPC asks questions. So, it is nice if you if you cover su such important current affairs also along with your syllabus. Okay. So, there is a question with regard to the urban culture of Indus civilization. The question is like this. You see. Granaries are located in the eastern side of the city. Granaries, eastern side. I said all the huge buildings, dimensional buildings are towards the western side in the citadel region. So granaries, great bath, or the so-called pillared hall, assembly hall, temple-like palaces, you know, or these ruling classes, residential blocks, all such uh, high buildings or maybe such uh, huge dimensional buildings towards the western side, not the eastern side. Citadel is western side, lower town is eastern side. Artisans and craft workers living in the western side, that is technically wrong, okay. So, they are interchanged. So, the statement both are wrong. Now, regarding this urban architecture of Indus civilization, please take care of few aspects here. Yes, one is they had a defensive walls. They had a defensive walls. Maybe protection, it is for protection from these floods, okay. 
Then they had citadel lower towns, they had drainage system, they had a multi storied buildings, they used these uh, burned bricks for construction. When other civilizations used uh, uh, dried bricks or baked bricks in the civilization, extensively used uh, uniform standard size burned bricks for construction. They had multi storied houses, bathroom attached houses. There's their house drains connected with the street drains, finally, waste emptied in the ponds, etc. So, given the most importance to their health, hygiene, sanitation. Then, see, uh, yes, their, their structures are mostly, uh, you know, for utility purpose. They, they are functional structures. What all the structures they had in the cities, they are for, they are fully functional. They are functional, uh, you know, for the functional purposes. They are not for, uh, you know, satisfying their, uh, you know, artistic creativity or aesthetic uh, beautification, etc. That is also important and no, no more clear evidences of the foreign influences in their architecture. Then, of course, they were well aware about this, uh, like what is called, uh, yeah, uh, yeah uh, uh, like health and hygiene. Then these uh, disaster proof buildings, you know, they, con they were constructed on these uh, so-called uh, upraised mud platforms. Then um, reservoirs, they are beautiful, you know, hydraulic engineering masters. Dolabira, recent site are into UNESCO list, you know, heritage list that is known for its uh, magnificent structures, I mean, artificial canals, dams, lakes, etc. Granaries, they had a good, you know, this is, this, this civilization was, it was sustainable for centuries and uh, economic self-sufficiency, sustainability, a feature of this civilization. Food grains in large quantity collected and stored in the grains and we know that uh, that is used for redistribution among the city people, even for trade also. They followed a barter system, okay. Also, it is important to know about this Harappan pottery, for a pottery of different civilization. UPC can ask questions like this. For example, there is a, there is a Neolithic age, Neolithic age or IVC or there is Gupta or there is Megalithic or there is Vedic. Opposite side, they will ask you the pottery of each civilization or each age. So you should know what is the pottery of each civilization, each age. Yes, there is Neolithic, they started making this uh, handmade pottery. Chalcolithic used black and redware pottery. Then IVC used to black on redware, greyware, etc. Then uh, Vedic used to painted greyware. What is that called? A PGW. PGW. Then these Mauryans used to northern black Polish to wear. Northern black Polish to wear. This is Mauryan pottery. Post Mauryan Kushanas used to, uh, you know, that red Polish to wear red polish to wear okay and guptas used uh, red wear guptas used uh, red wear so this understanding this different pottery of different ages cultures that is important prelims upc ask this type of questions in prelims okay another important part is of course you should know the the various uh, you know sites cultural sites of ancient medieval times it's important for you upc asked questions here several times upc asked you questions Questions could be like this, for example, Harappa, popular findings from Harappa, popular findings from Mohanjadaro, popular findings from Lothal, popular findings from this Dolavira, popular findings from Kalibangan. So UPC question would be like this, yeah, these large embankments, dams and uh, the city divided into three parts and this uh, uh, unique water harnessing system. Uh, you, or, or uh, you know, identity of a stadium kind of structure. All these are the unique features of Kalibangal, Lothal, Banavali, or Ragigargi, Ruber, you know, Sukhotada. You basically can ask like the, that kind of questions, you know, they can confuse you. So please understand, these are, these are findings from Dolavira. You know, fire altar, boast of it and script, lower fortified town, wooden drainage, copper ox, evidence of earth cake, wooden plow, camel's bone. These are popular findings from Kalibangan, okay. Then see, great bath, great granary, uh, prepared garments, textile pieces, Pashupati seal, statue of dancing girl, ivory weight balance, priest in statue, temple like palace. These are findings from Mohan Jadaru. This way, the popular Harappan sites and their findings, you should know, it's important for you, UPC, ask questions from this area. It's a very easy thing while having your... Uh, you know, aapki uh, jab uh, breakfast ho jata hai, dinner ho jata hai, saath mein, 
it's it's in your tab in your in your mobile you can just cover the popular findings of uh, this in the sites okay don't take so much time for that now harappan civilization its comparison with the other river valley civilizations you see coming to harappan civilization and its comparison with the egyptian mesopotamian civilization harappan civilization is known for its a uh, very sophisticated town planning very defined uh, you know city structure city construction you see planned towns with a grid like pattern it's a feature of in the in the cities and towns whereas on the other side you can see on the other side the egyptian mesopotamian civilizations you know yes they had a totally uh, i mean no unique city planning or maybe urban planning they followed now coming to script also in the script is not deciphered yet it is both to fair and script you know it is left to right right to left sorry it is right to left then left to right now the problem is like uh, uh, the signs and symbols are used and it is not deciphered but the other civilization scripts are deciphered now see writing material most of our inscriptions are found on the seals and uh, this uh, mesopotamian script uh, on the clay tablets egyptians you know they wrote on this uh, uh, papyrus sheets made of reeds okay then extent of the civilization this is much 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 uh, bigger than that of i mean according to recent excavations it is bigger than wider than that of mesopotamia and this egyptian then uh, building material burnt bricks mostly used here there they used uh, uh, dried bricks and uh, baked bricks okay the religion no temple structures used here no temple structures are here no temple structures religious structures temple like palaces are there but no historians archaeologists conclude they are temples but in other egyptian mesopotamian civilizations many temple like structures are identified okay yes these are peace loving people but they are you know war loving people in mesopotamia egypt you can see so many civil wars are there so many bloody wars have happened but here no such evidences and indus civilization declined early its urban phase declined by 1900 bc but other civilization even continued after this okay now another important thing is of course that is mauryan art and architecture coming to mauryan art and architecture mauryan uh, pillar structures tuba structures or uh, mauryan uh, yaksha yakshini sculptures they are important for you and uh, rocket architecture chaiti viharas important for you so see recently prime minister of india unveiled the 6.5 meter tall national emblem on top of this under construction new parliament structure okay so upsc can ask a question from a national emblem you know the question areas are like this animals seem to follow each other turning this wheel of existence till eternity you know this national emblem you can see abacus the animals you can see on the abacus then on the top you can see uh, lion standing okay below satyameva jayade so this word satyameva jayade is from mundago upanishad meaning truth alone trumps so upsc already asked a question Uh, satya meva chaitanya is uh, taken from which of the following sources it is from mundago banishit and see this is uh, this is uh, this is you see this uh, satya meva chaitanya that is written in devanagari script then capital crowned by the wheel of the law you can see there is a capital there is a capital crowned by wheel of the law 24 swak to wheel that is dharma chakra wheel four lines symbolizes buddha spreading dhamma in all directions it was built in the commemoration of first sermon by buddha known as this dharma chakra pravartana preaching buddha delivering his first sermon in sarna the deer park then see in the bagus you can see animals you know animals the galloping horse is there towards the western direction elephant eastern direction bull southern direction lion northern direction they all have their own symbolism also which we discussed upsc question was like this it's also important to cover ashogan inscriptions here ashogan pillars ashogan inscriptions you know pillar inscriptions are there cave inscriptions are there and uh, rock inscriptions are there pillar edicts cave edicts and rock edicts okay so coming to ashogan inscriptions major rock edict major rock edict one it to say yes it prohibits animal slaughter and bans festive gathering major rock edict second yes it deals care for man and animals mentions pandya satyaputra kerala putra so south india i mean their diplomatic relations with uh, uh, south indian rulers major rocket to th three it talks about generosity to brahmins about yuktas pradeshigas rajugas who would go every five years to different parts of his empire to spread the dhamma major rocket to four it talks about dhamma gosha sound of dhamma 
over Beri Gosha. Then major rocket into five, it's about uh, Dhamma Mahamatras. Major rocket into six, the king's desire to know about his people's conditions, welfare measures. Okay. Then say mass contact programs. Major rocket into eight, Ashoka's. Uh, seven is about tolerance for all religions. Eight is about Ashoka's first visit to Bodh Gaya and Bodhi tree. Okay, this is the way the pillar edicts are there, major rocket edicts are there, cave edicts are there, what each deal about. That is important for you. UPC will interchange and will ask in the question. So take care. Then there is a stuba structure. Stuba is also, uh, it is believed the relics and ashes of Buddha and Bodhisattvas are kept. It's a place of worship. Recently, Archaeological Survey of India discovered 1,000, 1,300 years old stuba right in the middle of a mining site in Odisha's Jaipur district at a yes, condolite mining site. Now UPC can ask questions. Yes, the popular stubas of Odisha. In match the pair, you know, the stubas and their locations can be in match the pair type of questions they can ask. Okay, or the essential features of stuba can be asked. See, stubas burial mounds, then uh, is cylindrical drums uh, having a circular anda. This is circular anda. Okay, it's having a harmiga, a sacrificial fire altar which is harmiga, chatra or chatri, which is which is you know symbolizing. Three jewels of Buddhism, Dhamma, Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha. Okay, then there is Medhi, this, uh, uh, you know, circumambulatory passageway. This is uh, this terrace. You know, people, devotees walk around this tube as a token of worship. Pradikshanapada. Thorana is, you know, this is that uh, directions for cardinal directions, gateways. Vedika is the railings. Okay, so the different terms related to stuba architecture, which is important for you. UPC can ask a question. Which of the following is not among the part of the, or which of which of the following is part of stuba or pillar architecture? That way UPC asks question. There are different stuba structures also. Many stubas built, you know, I mean, even after death of Buddha, many are dedicated to different bodhisattvas. Then the so-called rocket architecture is important. Rocket architecture, initial rocket architecture, you know, they are built as uh, chaityas and viharas. Chaityas are... Prayahar Viharas are residential halls, okay. So Mauryan age is also known for building that Chaityas and Viharas, then different rocket architectures which developed from the second century BC onwards that you have to cover very well. Eksha action is cultures of uh, these uh, Mauryas you have to cover very well. Then of course that way you have to cover the entire architecture from ancient to medieval to modern times. Even the latest architecture, I mean post-independent architecture, you know, there is, there is uh, Portuguese architecture, I mean during this, uh, till this independence we know modern architecture, Portuguese, French and this uh, British architecture. British architecture, there is, there is Gothic style or Victorian style, Neo-Roman style, there is indo saracenic styles, post-independence, uh, yes, Lake Ops here, then this Laurie Baker, Charles Corey architectures, that's important for you. So cover the architecture part very well, ancient, medieval, modern. Then different schools of Indian painting, that is prehistoric painting, mural paintings, miniature painting, then this modern paintings, company school of painting or Raja Ravivarma painting, Bengal school of art, then this uh, Madhubani Manjusha, Kalamkari, Pattachitra, kind of uh, folk paintings, all are important for you, they are salient features you have to go through. Tangible, intangible cultural heritage of humanity, recently you know that this uh, Durga Puja of Kolkata, Durga Puja uh, in Kolkata, uh, yes, it is, it is added into representative list of this, uh, representative list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity, okay, by UNESCO. So what are the different, like, uh, like items added into intangible cultural heritage of humanity, you know, UNESCO's list, you know, Durga Puja is there, Kumbh Mela is there, New Year Festival, Parsi's New Year Festival, Navaroji is there, Yoga is there, traditional brass copper craft of utensils making, then this uh, Sankirtana dance, this Buddhist chanting of Ladakh, Mudiyet, then this Kalbiliya folk songs and dances, then Chahu, Raman, Ramlila, tradition of Vedic chanting, Kudiyatam, okay, all this part of this, all this part of this, uh, what is called, uh, yes, intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Then you take care of the various uh, folk and Sanskrit theatre traditions of India, Dances of India, music traditions of India, puppetry of India, okay, a similar way, these uh, fairs and festivals of India, or popular uh, like uh, cultural sites of India, temple architecture of India, 
those concepts are important for you temple architectures their divisions and subdivisions indo islamic architecture mughal architecture all those concepts you have to cover very well sculptures different schools of sculptures gandhara madura amravati schools of sculptures you have to cover very well important personalities you have to cover very well then the foreign travelers to india for example megaston is yes ambassador of seleucus negator stayed at the court of chandragupta maurya founder of mauryan empire and he stayed in padaliputra okay and his famous work is indica in which he says this india is a yes a quadrilateral shaped country is surrounded by this water in the east and south portions then megaston is given a beautiful account about socio economic political cultural life of people during mauryan age okay he is the first one to do so in ancient india that's why he is regarded as father of indian history okay then demagus who visited at the court of this uh, chandragupta's uh, son chandragupta maurya's son that is uh, bindusara so demagus also furnished a good a good account of uh, his age in this india uh, similar way there are many foreigners who visited you know ptolemy fahin this huan sang h singh and so many travelers visited in ancient medieval modern times okay what are their accounts what are their findings what are their popular writings that you have to take care it's again a favorite area for upsc so this i just given you an overall outline on this art and culture in fact in our art and culture course very uh, uh, you know precisely comprehensively we covered that uh, art and culture static and current affairs syllabus and uh, if anybody wish to join that or take that you can contact us and take that course art and culture don't uh, ever uh, give up art and culture you know in the prelims examinations history economy geography polity environmental science science and tech and current affairs you will not cover very well revise multiple times practice a lot of questions i would say 45 50 days left to suppose you know daily you practice 100 questions okay so 50 days means 5000 questions so that will make you know a big impact in your overall preparation and in your final exam so practice revise well along with that give daily practice of questions upsc standard potential questions then that is the only solution to uh, get familiarized with the different patterns or different different challenging demands of upsc questions and you will get to that knack of solving that upsc questions and that fear you will get it off your fear you will get courage to attempt any sort of questions irrespective of their difficulty for which practice matters a lot and also try to apply your own brain into exam not your thousands of mentors or thousands of friends brain you know something must you know you are striking the mind when they say different strategies elimination methodologies methods are there but it must first connect to you it must first you know flash in your mind you must you should have the skill of applying that uh, logic into the question or solving the question also take care that the logic you applied you know it it is synchronized with the upsc logic or maybe it you know it 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 is satisfy that upsc demand okay so think from upsc perspective so that things will be much easier for you and learn the knack of solving the difficult questions and no shortcuts only practice practice a lot even if you failed miserably it doesn't matter doesn't matter every topper has or they had the same experience only learn from your mistakes yeah learn from your mistakes practice a lot if you solve this 5000 questions within this uh, 40 to 50 days i'm sure i'm damn confident you will learn the art of solving prelims questions and definitely you will clear prelims 2023 all the best thank you